folks, welcome back to uh, what once was called Adventurous Ukuleles and is now uh, Adventurous and Beginner Ukuleles, but anyway, it's a live streamed ukulele tutorial with me, Tim. Hope you're all doing well. Nice to not see you, but nice to see there's a few people tuned in already. It's another sunny morning for once. Uh, the rain seems to have passed and we're back into our sort of early summer. Um, so I hope you're all doing okay. We're still in lockdown, sort of. No one's quite sure anymore. But anyway, we're still learning music together, I hope. Um, make sure you've got your ukuleles and your hats, of course. I've remembered this time. Uh, today we are going to be looking at Mamma Mia by ABBA. Uh, and before we go any further, let's have a listen to uh, what we are trying to learn today. One, two, three, four. So, I hope that worked okay. Uh, as you heard, it's probably slightly less serious of a song than last week when we looked at Mad World. Um, this time uh, it's ABBA, the epitome of cheesy pop, or rather, uh, not so cheesy, maybe Scandi pop. I don't know, ABBA have a an odd place. I always used to dismiss ABBA as just manufactured pop, but uh, the more I end up playing songs like this, the more I realise they are, they are well-written songs. They are, they're not particularly serious, they're not particularly deep and meaningful. 
Except, of course, they're dealing with love, uh, which is the most deep and meaningful thing any of us ever encounter in our lives, perhaps. Um, but uh, they're also quite well written musically. Um, this, on the face of it, is an extraordinarily simple song. You really only need three chords to play this. Um, but, as you saw from the video, you can add a lot of layers to this, and there are a few other chords that we can add in to really capture the song. So, uh, before we get started, um, just check in the chat, make sure the microphone's on this week. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, do let me know if something like that happens in the chat, I will try and keep an eye on it. But there is a delay between what I say and when you hear it. So, I know some of you are jumping up and down shouting at the TV, or the computer, or the tablet last week when I forgot to turn the mic on. Um, so bear in mind your shouting will have an effect, well the shouting won't, but the chat messages will, but there's a bit of a delay, so I will fix it if you do let me know. Um, I can't see any problems this morning, so let's crack on. You need a ukulele. This is a tenor ukulele. You can do this on a soprano ukulele or a concert ukulele. Um, you can even do it on a baritone ukulele, but the tuning is different. So I'm going to address tenor, soprano and concert size ukuleles. And we need to be in tune. So the strings on a ukulele are G, C, E and A. G, C, E, A. You can match them to mine. If you think they're more or less matched, then let's play a C chord, third finger, third fret, String nearest the floor. Should be sounding more or less the same as mine. If it's not, then pause the video, go and find a tuner, uh, or just uh, tune to another instrument, like a piano or something else. Then check each of those strings are sounding at the right frequency. Once you know the names of them, you know what to look for on the tuner. If you play that string, and your tuner says F, then you know it should be a G. So tune it until it says G. Okay, we'll move fairly swiftly past that. Our ukuleles are in tune, we're ready to play. So let's switch over to the chord chart, which is here. And now we've also got ooh, autofocus on as well. We've got a close up of the chords in the top corner there. So, what chords do we need to play this song? The main chords we need are C, F, and G. About 80% of the song is those chords. Um, and if you include one extra chord, the slightly oddly named C augmented, or C org, uh, sometimes written as C plus, then that's four chords, and actually that's kind of 90% of the song, I would say. Um, certainly the entire intro and verse can be played with those four chords. Um, the chorus is mostly C, F, and G again, and then just towards the end, we have, uh, we have an A minor, an E minor, and a D minor creeping in. We've also got a little B flat in there, but it's not essential. Those of you who are comfortable with B flats, great, let's add it in. If B flats a step too far, don't panic, you can easily leave the B flats out. But we'll address that as we go. We'll start off by looking at the really simple version of this song, and then we'll add the layers that we can uh, add on top. So, just like when we tuned up, our first chord is gonna be a C major chord. Should be fairly familiar to you. Just in case it's not, third finger, third fret, string nearest the floor. By the frets, I mean these metal strips across the fretboard. And I normally will refer to the strings as string nearest the floor, string nearest your head, because that's the same for left-handed and right-handed ukuleles. But I may also refer to them by name, G, C, E, and A. That's also the same for left-handed and right-handed ukuleles. So our first chord, C major, should be familiar to most of you. The next chord we're going to need is one that sounds a bit scary, C augmented. It's not one that crops up a lot in beginner ukulele songs, but it's not hard to play. Take your C major chord, and we need to add in a finger onto the G string first fret, and I would use my first finger for that if I'm using my third finger for that one. It's quite a tense sounding chord doesn't sound that great on its own, but this intro to this piece is really quite tense. So when we change between those two chords, we've got a nice landed, solid sounding C major chord, and then we've got this augmented chord. What we've done there is taken the fifth of the chord and sharpened it. It's a C major chord with a sharpened fifth, or rather augmented fifth, hence C augmented. So get used to that, get used to changing between that. 
that those are the two chords we need to use for our intro and this also happens in between the verses and at the end of the song as well so the simplest way of playing that would be a bar of C one two three four and then a bar of C augmented one two three four and then do that again So we do that four times through, the C, C augmented, four times through on uh, as the intro. Most of the rest of the time we're only going to do it twice through. Um, but if you feel like doing it four times through when you're doing your own arrangement, that's fine. So the intro then, in the simplest form, would sound like this. C, two, three, four, C augmented, two, three, four, C. I'm strumming every, I'm strumming twice per beat here. You could also strum just once per beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's our simplest way of playing it. If you're strumming twice per beat, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, then there's a little wrinkle we can add in. And that is to change chord half a beat early each time. So obviously the first chord we play needs to start on the beat. But every other change we do, either from the C to the C augmented or the C augmented back to the C, I want to happen on the and after four. So if this is a step too far, don't worry, just stick to beat number one. But if you're ready for an extra layer, we can change like this. One and two. That gives us a little anticipation and kind of jumps the gun ever so slightly on changing these chords, which again adds this kind of tenseness to this. It's an odd sort of intro for a cheesy love song. Uh, it's not really a cheesy love song, it's a cheesy breakup song maybe. Um, but it adds this odd tension to the intro. Um, so let's have a listen to that. So counting one and two and three and four and one. that again if we're doing our intro. So next layer on the intro um, is to um, certainly when we're playing that every, twice per beat we are mirroring the actual melody that's being played. There's not much strumming going on in this song, it's a lot of piano, there's a few guitars, um, but this intro is played on the piano and it's a very percussive piano and it's playing one note at a time. It's actually playing this. So I'm only using two notes from the chords. I'm using the C, which is an open C string, and I'm using a G, which could be third fret on the E or the open G, same note. So this is the riff that goes on top of those chords. And you can see, if we're playing the chords twice per beat, then we are mirroring that rhythm. So that's the rhythm I'd recommend if you're gonna strum this section. But if you wanna play the actual individual notes, on the chord chart there is an outline of all the different layers we can add to this and this is riff number one um, it's a little bit small on the screen there appreciate so do download the sheet and look at it and print it off yourself or have it on your screen i've written the way to play that uh, using the open strings where possible so i'm going to play an open c and then an open g and do that round and round again for the bar of C. That's our, essentially where our C chord lands. Then for the C augmented, I'm just going to put my first finger down onto the G string, and then keep playing the same pattern with my right hand. C string and then the G string. Back to the C. So let's start that again. One and two and three and four and... So yeah, I think that's a yeah, got that right. I was at a moment of doubt there. Now, when I play this, I tend to play it 
but in a way that makes more sense for my guitarist brain. Unfortunately, I was a guitarist before a ukuleleist. Um, and that means the strings nearest my head should be in my head, the lowest ones, but they're not on the ukulele, which is why we can play that riff in the way I've just described. But I would tend to play it with my finger on the E string, 3rd fret, and then swapping between the 3rd fret and the 4th fret. It just feels more natural to me, and I like the sound of it, but it's probably easier to play it with those open strings um, if you'd rather. So either way, the way I've written is with the open strings, uh, and, but the way I tend to do it on the video is like that. So that is our riff one. Let's go back to the chords. So that means our intro can be a combination of those strummy chords and then that finger-picked pattern if we if we feel like we're able for it. Um, and we're going to do that for we're going to do it for eight bars. So it's four times through the sequence. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing there, but once once just four times through that twice through the sequence. Two, three, and four, and one. I didn't anticipate the return to the C chord there, uh, but we could do that as well if we wanted. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, there is another layer we can add on top of that, but we'll come back to that later on. Um, even if you are not in the world of lead ukulele, um, I would really like to see people having a go at that. It's a really effective rhythmic part and it instantly people go, oh, I know that, What's that? What, what song's that? And you get the audience on your side already. Which is always a good thing when playing ukulele. It doesn't always happen the first time you pick up the ukulele. Then we are into the verse properly. Again, we're starting on C. Um, the chords are fairly simple, they should be relatively familiar. We've got C, we've got a G, so open G, 2nd fret on the C, 3rd fret on the E, 2nd fret on the A, and I'm using my 1st, 2nd and 3rd fingers that way around. So 2nd goes over to the E string, 3rd goes in between those two fingers. We've got our triangle shaped G chord. It's relatively well known, if you, even if you're a beginner, you've probably played this before. However, it's probably not the first chord you learned. It's three fingers, it can take a while to get the hang of. And we do have to change to it fairly quickly in this piece. So probably the hardest part of the verse here, right at the start. C, G, and then back to a C again. The other chord we're going to need is an F. Second finger, second fret on the G, open C. First finger, first fret on the E, and then an open E. Move slightly over a bit so my fingers are more in the shot. That's the other chord we're going to need for our verse, along with our C augmented a bit later on. So our first couple of lines do uh, I sound like this. Two beats of C, two beats of G, a whole bar of C, two whole bars of F. Something like this. One, two, G, one, two, C, one. F, two, three, four, and another bar of F. And we do it again. C, G, C, then the F. Good, I hope you're counting there. So I do eight strums on that last F. When you're playing it slowly, it feels quite long. Um, if we put the melody on top of that, it sounds like this. Two, three, four. I've been cheated by you since I don't know well. Three, four, one, two, three, and again. So I made up my mind, it must come to an end. You can feel how that F is really quite long, particularly when we're playing it slowly. So there is a little riff you can add in there, and it fits quite nicely with the chord that we're playing. I'm just going to switch the view again. This is riff number three. I've skipped out riff number two, and I'll come back to that later on. Riff number three fits with our F chord, so we're just filling in this long F with a little bit of a rhythmic interest. So 
you've got those notes coming through at the end, and if you know the song, you'll you know that it's done high up on the strings, and we get this. That's the riff we are trying to play. Um, you notice on the video I did at the start that I played it with separate um, ukuleles, but I was also playing it on the main ukulele. You don't need to have another player, you can do this from within the chord. So we strum that F, but focusing on the low C string here, uh, there, and we're going to go mostly on the o open C string, and then we're just going to put the ring finger down as if we're playing a D minor just for one note. F, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum, bum. So it's on beat number three of the one, two, three, four. Um, and then we do a pause, we have a rest one for one beat, and then we do. So I'm focusing on the E string there. Two beats on that, two uh, notes on that, then one open, and then back to the open C string. So rest, one, one, zero, 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 zero. Put them together, it sounds like this. And you can hear with the second part of it, I'm doing a strum part way across the ukulele to get to that first fret. And that just allows me to re-emphasize the chord underneath that melody. So I'm not just going... which could work, but I'm actually getting the chord in there as well. However, you can just perfectly happily stick to the F chord and count for eight beats here. Good. So we've done the first two lines of the verse. Just gonna check the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Tim, there's a boogeyman behind you. Thanks, Andy. Just checking. You never know. I've got a five-year-old in the house, anything can happen. So after that, we move into the next section of the verse. This is, um, this is identical almost to the intro section. So we've got our C major chord and then our C augmented chord. We can actually play the same riff. But if we're strumming it, it sounds like this. Look at me now. see exactly the same movement as we did for the intro so it should be familiar to us if we're playing the riff it would sound like this look at me now will I ever learn I don't know how but I suddenly or if you're playing it with the open string look at me now will I ever learn I don't know how but I suddenly so it should be fairly familiar there. Uh, we use riff one, that's the riff I just played. We've also got riff number four, we'll come back to that one later on. So the riff number two and riff number four are kind of a lead ukulele style. We can add that layer at the end. Then we're moving into the final part of the verse. Um, this has got some quick changes in, but it's still just C, F and G. We start with an F, so but I suddenly F, lose control, another F. G with my soul. Stay on the G for two beats. Then we got these quick changes F and C, the back to a G. Just one look. So that's F, C, G. This is quite a fun bit if you ask me. If you're playing twice per beat, at this point I would like you to stop and just play once per beat. Just one look. So it's nicely on the beat there. Um, then we hold the G for another two and a, one and a half bars. We do the same thing again, F, C, G, and hold it. So those two lines sound like this. It's a playing once per beat. Two, three, four. Lose control. F, there's a fire with G in my soul. Two more beats. One, two. F, C, G. Two, three, four. One, two. F, C, G. Two, three, four. So it's mostly G, that section, but we've got some fast changes in there. There's a, If those changes are quite quick for you, then all I can say is, 
practice makes perfect. Fast chord changes are the hardest bit. Learning the chords themselves is not that hard on the ukulele, there's only four strings, there's only so many shapes we can, uh, we can do. Um, but changing between them quickly takes practice. There's no way around it, I'm afraid. You're just going to have to repeat it slowly and correctly. So I would practice that G shape, moving to an F, moving to a C, moving to a G. Hold the G and then F, C, G. Do it really slowly so there's no possibility of you making a mistake. Each of those chords should sound good in their own right. So if you're getting this, then you're doing it at the right speed, but it's not sounding good. So do it slowly, sounding good, and then speed it up. Two, three, four, one, two, F, C, G. I won't labor that point, but do practice that. That's the fastest chord change in the song. Um, possibly. There's another one in the chorus, but it's an optional one. Uh, so let's do that as if we're playing twice per beat now from the lose control section. Two, three, four. Lose control. There's a fire within my soul. Just wanna look and I can hear a bell ring. One more look and I forget everything. Oh, oh, oh. So we got that whoa at the end and we hold the G through that. If you want to put a break in, that's a good place to do it. So we get this. Just one more look and I forget everything. Whoa. That's on the last bar of G there, if you want to put a break in. I haven't marked it in, it's an optional thing, but it's quite effective, I think. Okay, that is the whole verse. Let's do the whole verse. I'm going to be strumming most of the time twice per beat. You can do this with constant downstrokes. That's what I tend to use, but it can feel quite draining after a while. I'm using very small downstrokes. I'm not, because the thrash metal version will really knacker your fingers in. So keep them nice and small. We're not going super loud. We just want to get a bit of energy in the movement. If you prefer, you can do a down up motion. It has slightly less energy, but it's a lot easier on your fingers. Okay, here's the verse. One, two, three, four. Cheated by you since I don't know when. C, G, C, then the F, then our riff. Look at me now. Will I ever learn? I don't know how. But I suddenly F. Okay, that was our verse. Hopefully that makes sense. It's all F, C's and G's, apart from that C augmented, which is quite a cool chord, I think. Um, so, should be not too bad for you. Then we go into the chorus. Start off with C. Mamma mia, here I go again. So, two bars of C. If you're strumming once per beat, sounds like this. Three, four. Then we move to an F. My, my, how can I resist you? So the first two lines of this chorus are basically just C for two bars, F for two bars, and then again C for two bars, F for two bars. If you are feeling adventurous and you know how to play a B flat, lots of different ways of playing a B flat, they're all essentially the same. Um, if you look at the top of your sheet, you see I've got a mini bar across the two strings nearest the floor on the first fret, second finger, second fret, third finger, third fret. That's the way the book suggests playing a B flat. I tend to play it like that, with that bar all the way across, purely because I'm a guitarist, that's the way we learn it on the guitar. You can also play it with four fingers if you don't like the bar. Works fine. Takes a bit longer to get to, if you ask me, because there's four fingers involved and not just three. 
But if you can manage that chord, then you can put it in the on the second beat of the first bar of F. So it sounds like this. Mamma mia, here I go again. F, B flat, F. How can I resist it? So we get this F. My, my. So the first B flat is on the first one of my. Then we're back to the F on the second my. It's quick. So don't panic if it's beyond your fingers to start with. Practice makes perfect. The B flat is introduced at around grade two on the ukulele. So um, don't panic if you still feel like you're pre-grade one. Then don't attempt a B flat yet. Be aware that it exists and you know how to play it now. If you fancy starting to practice it now, great. We can happily just stay on the F though. Works absolutely fine. I really like the B flat though, it kind of outlines the harmony a lot more clearly. The only other thing I'm going to say about the first two lines of the chorus is that I actually want them to be quiet, or at least much less uh, strong than the bit before. We've just done and I want it to drop down. And I want to play it like this. Mamma mia, here I go again. Now, what am I doing here? I'm still strumming quite hard. But I'm muting the strings slightly. Not completely, but just slightly. I'm using this part of my part of my hand. They call it a palm mute, but it's not really your palm. That's your palm. I'm using the side of my palm, the kind of, not so much the heel, but the side there. And I'm resting it just over the saddle on the ukulele. So just, there's the, the saddle is this white line on the bridge, this black bit, and I'm moving my hand just, oh, let's get this right, just over, there's the saddle, just over the saddle. I'm trying to do it perpendicular to the strings, so that they're a right angle, so I'm muting each of the strings equally. If I go too far, the strings completely get stopped. If I don't go far enough, they ring on just like normal, just over the saddle. And I hear a little bit of the sound, but not very much. So I strum quite hard and I get this kind of percussive muted sound. It basically stops the strings from ringing on, but you still hear the note. It's called a palm mute and it's a very effective technique. Not that straightforward to do, because while you are muting those strings, you need to strum without leaving, the, without leaving getting your hand to leave the strings. You're just strumming across the strings like that. Worth practicing, and you get this lovely It's quite a funky technique. Um, you also use it a lot in rock guitar to get this really chuggy rhythm in heavy metal. I'm not doing that today, but I want that kind of chuggy effect. I'm looking for the percussion sound of it. I still want the sounds of the chord, but I don't want it to ring on for ages. I want it to kind of suddenly drop in volume. So I'm doing that here. Mamma mia, here I go again. Then we get the drop, or as they would call it, they didn't have a drop back then. But suddenly all that kind of mutedness disappears and we get this. Yes, so that's when we take the mute away and we get this big lift in the middle of the chorus. It's my favourite bit, can you tell? So we take the mute away and we've got a sequence of chords from C major. Here we got a C, yes, and then a G, broken. Then an A minor, first time we've used that today. Second finger, second fret, string nearest your head. Blue since then. And then an E minor. Uh, second, so open G, fourth fret on the C, third fret on the E, second fret on the A. Then we parted. That's the only time we play the E minor or the uh, it's the only time we play the E minor in this song. It suddenly comes out of nowhere, but it's in our key of C major, so it's not that unexpected. Then we've got our F B flat thing. Why, why? Again, stick to the F if you'd rather. Why, why? Then we get a D minor. 
So just add your ring finger into the F chord, onto the C string. Did I ever? Then a G. Let you go. Back to a C. For a whole bar this time. Mamma mia. Then the A minor again. Now I really know. And we got that F B flat, F D minor. My my, I could never let you go. And we're going straight back to a C after that last G. Now, those three, two and a half lines there at the end of the chorus are the, the trickiest part of the song, I would say. Uh, if you're a beginner, you probably found it not too bad up till now. This last bit will be challenging for you if you're not used to the minor chords. And um, we've also got a nasty little offbeat rhythm in that bar of F and D minor. So the first line is not so bad. Just a bar of each chord. Then this bar is the tricky one. F, B flat, F, D minor. Now D minor comes on the off beat. It's not on beat four, it's on the and after beat four. So we get this one, two, three, four, and I ever G. Then the G happens halfway through the next bar. Messes with your head. This is what I mean. It's quite a cleverly written song. You think it's simple, then it's got augmented chords and some weird offbeat rhythms going on. And a B flat, which isn't in our key. Who knew Abba were clever? So once more on that bar, we're going to count one, two, three, four, and I ever G you go. So the last line and a half sounds like this one, and two, and three, and four, and F. After the chorus, we almost always go back to the intro, outro, in between section. This or the so uh, there we go. That is all the way through the chords. Um, so let's play through the whole chorus just so you've got it in one go. I'll shout the chords out: one and two and three and four and Mamma Mia, muting. Here I go. See again, does it show it? F, B flat, F, stay on the F, how much I miss you, muting off. C, G, E minor, D, E minor, F, B flat, F, D minor, G, C, A minor. Okay, so trickiest part of the song there, that ending of the chorus. Maybe pause the video, have a little practice of that. Um, there's a couple of other riffs then we've skipped over. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. So uh, those of you who know the song well, you know it starts off with this... It's almost like the beginning of a heavy metal song, I think. And then you get this lovely um, 70s guitar sound uh, coming in over the top. Lots of harmony guitars. Uh, there's actually multiple harmonies of that as well, but that's the main melody there. So if you want to have a go at that, and you've got more than one person uh, playing this, one person can stay on the... And then the other person can, on the top of that... Let's get the tab up for that. Oh, I realise I've left the tab up for the whole time. I do apologise, guys. You've had the tab up and not the chords. Ah, it's live, I can't go back and change it. That's the trouble with live streams, but at least you can tell me what's going on in the chat, if I was looking. Ah, yes, Andy, thank you. Uh, you did tell me, and I wasn't watching. Apologies. So, this is riff two we're looking at now, and I will put the chords back in a minute. Riff two is the lead guitar line that goes over the top of um, the intro riff. If you want to have a go at it, we're starting on the third fret of the uh, E string, 
We're going to hammer on to the fifth fret. So I'm going to pick it once, hammer my finger down. Then I'm going to go to the third fret on the A. And then I'm going to slide up to fret seven. So it sounds like this. Then I stay on the seven, pull off to a five. And then re-pick the seven. And then we can just go five and three, or we can do with a little turn there. So I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. If you are ready to have a go at that, then practice is the key. Um, you'll need to know a little bit about lead techniques. We've got some hammer-ons, we've got some pull-offs, and we've got a, a, a twiddle, a, a trill almost. So I'm hammering on, pulling off, and sliding. Uh, it's quite satisfying to do, it takes a little bit of practice, but that's how we do that lead bit. Uh, and there's also, uh, in the verse, when we do this, um, this particular riff, the instead of playing that lead line, the riff 2, we're going to use riff 4, which sounds like this. One, two, so one, two, three. Three, four, one, two. So it's just four and two, four, slide up to seven, and then wait, and then four, two, four, slide up to eight. Uh, you'll hear that in the video that I played at the start. So let's switch back to the chords. I do apologize, folks. It wasn't just Andy, I'm sure, that was shouting at the screen. Now we've got the chords on the screen again, and all my uh, discussion of the chorus has been uh, somewhat falling on blank ears. Let's... Uh, I don't think we need to do it all again. Time is ticking on. Let's do the chorus one more time. Uh, no, let's do once through the intro verse and we'll just do once through the intro verse and chorus and just outlining which bits go where. So we start the song off with our intro, C, C augmented with the alternating riff if you want to. And over the top of that we're gonna use if you feel like it. I can't do it right now. We need more people in the room. We'll do that in a minute. So intro. Count in. One and two and three and four and one. One and two and three and four and one, two. Then riff two comes in. into the chorus for the second time uh, and I think uh, we normally repeat the chorus at the end and then to finish we do the outro uh, which is the same as the intro with the riff on top okay so let's just check the chat make sure I'm not doing anything else stupid so I forgot the mic last week this time I left the chords off the screen ah, one day I was doing better at the start of these live streams beginners luck I guess 
Um, okay, so I'm going to go and find some company. Uh, my five-year-old has promised to join in on the drums. Uh, and we're going to have a go at playing through this. So practice any bits for the next 30 seconds or so. Or, or pause the video and practice for longer if you wish. And we're going to play through this whole piece. Back in a sec. Alrighty, you're still here, possibly. Some of you are still here. William is going to play the cajon and the drum. Let's get you in the shot. Yeah. So, <laughs> William's waving at the screen. Camera's over here, William. Are you going outside? What's that one? Can you play okay like that? Yeah. Good. All right, so uh, thanks for bearing with me and sticking with us. This one's a little less serious than last week, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I think this is a lot of fun to play. Um, there's so many layers you can add to this. Uh, you can see on the video I had a lot of fun just adding bits, different bits. If you've got any other singers, there's loads of nice harmonies, but beyond the scope of today's tutorial. No one's complained about anything uh, else that I've forgotten, so if you're ready, let's do this. William can do... and. Sophia is going to strum mostly uh, just like that. So she's going mostly for the twice per beat, the quaver strum or the eighth note strum. So for the riff, the intro, mm -hmm. you're just doing. Yeah. Okay. So I'll try and do the, um, the those bits, the, the the licks that are the riffs that are on the second page of the notes. I'm probably not going to do riff four because it tends to put me off. <laughs> I can't sing it and play it basically. I haven't practiced enough that all the other riffs should be in there. And William's going to do the whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> So let's give this a go. Um, if you like these videos, guys, um, then do check out the links in the description uh, and support me to keep making them. Thank you so much to those of you who already do. You guys are amazing. I'm glad, to, I'm privileged to have the opportunity to make these videos during this really weird time of uh, our history. Okay, Mamma Mia by ABBA. Are we ready? One. Two, three, four.
we didn't practice the ending. Well done. No, wait, you're not going to give me a high five. Left me hanging. Bye. Virtual high five to you guys. Okay, if you're still with us, uh, I can see one person's dropped off the live stream in protest. Then uh, <laughs> thank you so much for staying around. We had fun. Uh, oh, somebody says loving the dinosaurs, William. <laughs> nice. I've just realised you can't see Sophia. Uh, of course, one more thing. There she is. She was here. She was playing, I promise. Um, so, guys, thank you so much. I hope you had a good time. We'll be back next week. No idea what song we'll do next week. Why don't, if you have some ideas, let me know. Uh, and uh, I hope you all have a really good week. See you next time. Bye.